Welcome back to Rule the Waves. We are playing in Germany and try to get through the grand campaign. In the last episode we talked quite a bit about ship design and also designed our legacy fleet. And those of you who are more experienced already with the game will probably have noticed that um, quite a few ship designs are quite flawed, which is purely my fault because I have uh, not a very good grasp, at least not at the moment, of uh, how to design ships in the World War One era. Anyway, let's do some comparison with other navies before we uh, jump into the first turn. So we click on the Almanac, and I did some uh, comparison uh, comparisons already, so uh, we don't have to spend too much time clicking around here. But overall, in terms of numbers, we are doing all right. Uh, we are going to have just as many ships as uh, Great Britain and the US. But I assume they will lay down more dreadnoughts pretty soon. We will have the most heavy cruisers. Uh, we will also have the most light cruisers pretty soon. And we're going to have uh, the most destroyers. Because most of the other nations do have more destroyers in total, but we are the only nation that currently has patrol boats. So what that means is that once war starts, we can just put all our patrol boats on patrol duty and free up all our destroyers to remain uh, on active fleet duty, which means that we can actually use them in uh, fleet engagements. So that's overall a good thing. But the big problem is uh, the design of our dreadnoughts and of our heavy cruisers. I, I think I did made a few mistakes. I'm not sure if the dreadnought uh, actually was a big mistake. I'm pretty sure the heavy cruisers will have uh, quite some trouble. So let's have a look at, for example, the Brits and their ships and their dreadnoughts. This dreadnought is equally armored. Uh, it's equally fast than our dreadnoughts, but it's way more... Uh, it's way heavier armed. They have already 12-inch guns and they have a lot of secondary guns too. We knew that basically. We knew that the others would use 12 inch guns and bigger guns than we use because 10 inch guns are really the smallest guns I think you put on the Dreadnought. But we made the conscious decision to go for the zero quality 10 inch guns instead of the minus one quality 11 inch guns because we have this common theme as I mentioned that we want to go for highly accurate long range uh, gunfire. That's kind of the, uh, the trademark of our fleet. But that might backfire uh, pretty soon. Anyway, they have certainly better dreadnoughts than we do. They have a few older dreadnoughts too. Well, one in that case and already one in, uh, under construction. This one is... Um, the difference basically is that it only has 7-inch belt armor. I'm not quite sure how our 10-inch guns will fare against uh, the 7 or 9-inch armor. We will see. We will find out probably pretty soon. The same holds true for most other dreadnoughts. Actually, I think for all dreadnoughts, all of other the other dreadnoughts are armed with 12 inch guns probably minus one or even minus two quality 12 inch guns so that might be uh, a bit of condolence here they usually weighed about one and a half thousand tons more than our ships and that's basically all armament about the heavy cruisers those of you who are more experienced will probably have noticed that I only packed four and a half inch belt armor on my heavy cruisers and that might be a disadvantage now. I wasn't quite sure how much armor you put on a heavy cruiser uh, and I wanted to build a kind of lightweight heavy cruiser, a 10,000 ton cruiser. Most other nations do not just have the same main armament, let's compare it again with, an, uh, with a British heavy cruiser, but they either have 9 inch, sometimes even 10 inch uh, main guns in the case of the Italians and they have much heavier armor. I'm not sure why the AI did not pack any deck armor on their ships. I'm afraid that might be because uh, the AI knows way better than I do that they won't need deck armor at the beginning of the game. So I'm quite afraid that um, that we have wasted weight on the deck armor but I like to tell myself at least that we have a bit, well, better protection for possible plunging fire. In terms of armament, I mentioned that already, also superior to our heavy cruisers, so that's, um, that's a bummer too. We, we really have to make sure to start building uh, a new generation of dreadnoughts and heavy cruisers, which will take quite some time and uh, will cost us quite a lot pretty soon. In terms of CLs, uh, light cruisers, our cruiser, I'm not quite sure about our armor. Um, let's have a look. 
It's two and a half inch, so uh, again, lighter armor than uh, the other ships. It's roughly the same weight class, but our light like, cruisers are actually very fast. Uh, and I think that makes them superior raiders and we said that we want to use them as raiders mainly maybe also in fleet engagements but but mainly as raiders so I think that's uh, good news uh, overall again the other ships are um, usually better armed than our our ships again uh, in this in this category too let's have a look eight six inch guns and ten three inch guns just six four inch guns so certainly better armed than uh, our ships but i hope that's going to be a, uh, a good raider anyway destroyers i haven't compared them as i said i think we have a numerical advantage in terms of destroyers and we will probably have to rely on them during the early years since uh, all of the weaknesses that our dreadnoughts have and the heavy cruisers have but hopefully this will make up for some weaknesses according to that I will uh, adjust some of our research because I think I will lower the priority on ASW technology and at the same time increase the priority on turrets and gun mountings. So to make sure that we can, uh, well, make up for all our shortcomings as soon as possible so that we can pack more and better turrets with bigger guns and more accurate fire on our new generation ships as soon as possible. So that's uh, kind of our main concern right now. And I'm afraid that might uh, this whole playthrough might backfire badly, but we will try and uh, carry through. So that's pretty much it for uh, all the adjustments that we made pre-game. Remember that we have not enough ships on foreign stations, so in that case uh, we have an exclamation mark here, we might lose a bit of prestige due to my own stupidity, but our ships are already in transit. We have low intel effort on all other nations and have a few ships that are under construction, but a few also put on uh, halt at the moment because we can't afford it. Yep, I think that's it. Let's hit the turn button. There are insufficient ships on foreign stations. Continue anyway. Yes, we know that. Uh, more ships in the Mediterranean that we can uh, support. That is because our ships that are currently in transit to North and Southeast Asia and other nations are already laying down uh, new dreadnoughts. In that case, it's France. Again, another uh, dreadnought. Russia is laying down dreadnought. USA is laying down dreadnoughts. So we will see quite more, quite a few more dreadnoughts pretty soon. Uh, da -da -da -da. And now Great Britain is uh, doing the same, laying down more dreadnoughts. More heavy cruisers. Coincidence rangefinder, gradual national accuracy improvement, not bad. Hydraulic recoil, gradual national rate of fire improvement, not bad either. Okay, the new French uh, heavy cruiser is carrying seven inch guns. I think ours is carrying uh, eight inch guns, right? So that's all okay. Uh, Solferino is being commissioned in 22 months. All right. Private shipbuilding is expanding. Max dock size increased by 1,000 tons. That's a good thing because I want to build much bigger ships pretty soon. Italy has commissioned the ship DD Alpino. Okay, not too interesting. Tension is increasing five months till we can build a 16,000 ton ships. Let's do another turn. The British government is offering to sell us the rights to Krupp armor for 1.3 million. Do we have the money at the moment? I would say yes, because I want to have a uh, state of the art navy and I want everything that we can possibly get in terms of technology. Yep, that's uh, the Krupp armor. Improved surface condenser, weight saving on machinery. Two CLs are being commissioned into the Navy. And now we have quite a bit uh, surplus of money to start construction uh, on one of our dreadnoughts again. Okay, another turn. Improved hydrostatic valve. There's uh, improving our torpedoes. Uh, 19 knots. 
So both new uh, dreadnoughts will have a speed of 19 knots, that's one speed faster than ours. There has been a rebellion in the British possession of Grand Bahama, what do you recommend? We should support the rebels, it's in the interest of all nations that the conflict is resolved peacefully, we should mediate. Help Great Britain to root out the rebels, see what this uh, might lead to, tension minus, prestige and tension minus, tension plus plus. I think I will just go for the tension minus, that's not too bad. I don't want to fight the Brits anyway, at least not too soon. Research breakthrough pressure hull, not bad. A few heavy cruisers have been freshly commissioned. New docks completed, that's good news. And uh, two light cruisers have finished their working up. Working up basically means that once a ship is commissioned, it still takes some time for the crew to be trained on the ship and do, to be familiarized with the ship and all these kinds of things. So uh, you actually have it available once the, the workup is finished. A new heavy cruiser has been commissioned into the Navy. A revolution in an African country has left some of our nationals stranded. What do we do? Send a strong squadron to bombard the capital until our citizens are released. Join an international squadron sent to contain the violence and resolve the crisis via diplomatic means. So this is uh, budget plus, pr uh, prestige plus, tension double plus, budget plus, tension plus, prestige minus, tension minus. Let's go for the moderate option. I don't think, maybe we can even, does it say who we would make angry with that? No, it doesn't. How about we just fuck up the capital? and try and get as much budget as we can out of that. But I'm not sure if this just gives tension, tension, I mean, uh, and just as much budget as this one here. So let's, let's play it safe. Let's go for the one plus in budget and one plus in tension. Yeah, that's all right. We have a, that's, that looks good. Italy has laid down a new heavy cruiser uh, intelligence report. There are indications that an unknown nation has stolen industrial secrets from us. That is a bummer under construction. Let's resume construction on more ships. And let's increase dock size further. We have the money currently. We're making 500k a month. Private shipbuilding increased uh, our dock size too. That's a very good thing. And we have the heavy secondary battery. Enabled secondary guns heavier than seven inches. That is indeed good news. That is something that we might... Oh, and we can build heavier destroyers too. 600 ton destroyers. I don't think that's too much of a difference, to be honest. Uh, I'm not quite sure if we will actually use that, but we'll see. The Nationalist Party manages to persuade the Kaiser to authorize increased funding for the Navy. That is awesome. Exactly what we need. Uh, the ship B Illinois will reportedly be commissioned in 21 months. Okay, 17 knots. That's not very fast. Russian scientists are mastering blah blah blah. That's not too important. Okay, but I'm always interested in the intelligence reports when it comes to the uh, design specificas of other ships. So we have 500k plus. Can we already build a few? No, we can't. We cannot build coastal submarines. Uh, we need a tech to do that. Uh, is there anything I wanted to do? Maybe we can resume construction. Uh, how long would it take? But the Schwaben will be ready next turn, so that should be... We should be in the uh, black numbers again next turn. Heavy Cruiser finished its working up. Schwaben is commissioned into the Navy. Good news. Uh, widespread unemployment and poverty, as well as cutbacks in military spending. You are asked to advise on how to handle the situation. Let's see. Budget minus prestige plus tension plus. Budget minus. Budget minus prestige minus. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go for this one. Increase tension, increase prestige and reduce budget. Hardened AP penetrator, that is good. Okay, a few uh, ships have been commissioned and uh, have finished the working up. Now we have all ships uh, under constant construction, that is good news. Oh, do we have any likely future opponents? Not at the moment, not really. 
Uh, is there anything I'm specifically worried about? Should we increase naval budget in regards to any specific nation? Let's go for the French, actually. I'm always a bit uh, respectful of the French because the reason for that is they have obviously most ships in uh, the Northern Europe uh, theater, which means that once war starts, uh, there's a good chance that there's going to be a big fleet engagement in which with our uh, inferior ships at the moment that would be uh, not really good, so I would like to have a bit of a prior warning about the designs and all, all these kinds of things. A new cruiser from the USA has just arrived on a goodwill visit and the press is only too eager to report on all of its advanced features. One reporter approaches you for a comment, what do you say? You should ask the politicians if you want uh, to know why we don't have a ship like that. It's certainly a nice ship, but ours are just as good. If that is the best they can come up with, we have nothing to fear from the USA. Uh, budget and prestige. Budget plus prestige plus, I meant. I think this just does nothing. And this is prestige plus tension plus. Actually, tension with the USA, I can take that. Let's go for the prestige. Power rammers, rate of fire improvement, early coastal submarines. That is good news. Let's, should we build some submarines already? How long do we have these ships under construction to? Eight, six, and seven months. Maybe we can finish some subs in the meantime. And once everything finishes, we can lay down a new generation of, uh, I guess it's going to be heavy cruisers first. Uh, we, we will have to think about that later. Build sub. It's going to cost us 100k a month. So why not build three for now? No, we go for four, we go a bit into the reds, that should be fine. Lidite bursting charges. The USA has increased naval spending. Schwaben has finished her working up. Cockburn safety valve. Six foot range finder. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, Russia is building a new heavy cruisers. Bad armor four inches. Well, that's not, that's like our heavy cruiser basically and turret armor 5 inches interesting I think they already have heavy cruisers with more belt armor why do they start to build 4 inch uh, 4 inch armored belts again I'm not quite sure well the next uh, dreadnought of theirs will carry 12 inch guns not too surprising I, I'd be surprised if they would take a step back in terms of uh, caliber size okay let's go quickly into the armor and compare a few numbers uh, in terms of numbers, we're doing all right here, also here, and certainly uh, in terms of light cruisers. No one is building destroyers, okay. Our top spy has managed to get hold of the blueprints for the new French ship, Solferino, currently under construction. Not bad. Let's have a look. Okay, uh, a lot of armor, a lot of... Well, it just weighs 12,800 uh, tons. That's not much. So that's really where the weight saving seems to come in because it doesn't weigh uh, more than our ship. It actually weighs, weighs much less and still has more armor. Well, not on the deck. Okay, they're, they're saving weight on the deck uh, as it seems. But they have an inch more of belt armor, 12 inch guns, quite proper armament. Yeah, 19 knots are not faster than our ships. Double bottom. Improved 10 inch guns, quality one. Wow, that makes it for an interesting decision now. That really makes it for an interesting decision because maybe we, instead of building new battleships, I mean new dreadnoughts, we can just rebuild our old ones and fit them with uh, 10 inch guns. Maybe it's going to be a mixture of both. Maybe it's going to be a few new ships and a few retrofitted ones. And maybe we just go for a new heavy cruiser generation first because I think they are more of a concern and at the same time retrofit our old ships. How about that? The dreadnoughts. Let's see. Private ship building is expanding. Bigger ships. British government is offering to sell us the rights to 13 inch guns of quality minus 2 for 6.2.6 uh, million. I don't really want that to be honest. I, I mentioned earlier that I 
that we're going for a long range precision fire but what about the minus two quality but then again our scientists can start working on that and that might be something for the next gen uh, dreadnought class why not yeah yeah let's let's, let's go ahead and buy them 13 inch guns Hull construction, improved riveting techniques. Let's go for another turn, shall we? How long does it take for all this stuff to get finished? Won't take too long, the tension levels are alright too. Private shipbuilding is expanding again. That is that is really a good thing. Oh, now the, the parliament votes to reduce naval spending. Uh, that is not very great. And the Brits are increasing naval spending. Niobe is being commissioned into the navy. Yeah, now slowly we'll have to think about uh, the next designs. One of our agents seemed to have been caught in France. Deny any involvement. Make the agent a national hero. Mm -hmm. This is a prestige plus. I'm not sure what the parenthesis means. I think this means that we have a chance to get a higher prestige. Tension with France, France is alright. Yeah, let's make him a national hero. Not too interesting. We are a few hundred thousand Reichsmark in uh, in plus in surplus. Let me think. Let's wait another turn. Maybe we can already start the rebuilds. Maybe we should already start the rebuilds. Okay, so let's go into the in service tab. Click on one of our right click on one of our dreadnoughts and open design for rebuild and let's select the quality one 10 inch guns can we actually increase we could also replace the machinery how much weight will we save with that now uh, 40 tons that that's not worth it can we get another no of course not I think I can't undo that. Let's just close it for a second, open it again for rebuild. Let's not go for the machinery improvement, but just uh, the new 10 inch guns. Does that make sense? Do we need anything else? Could we change uh, this number anyway? How about we. Ah, I thought we have a zero quality 5 inch guns. I'm thinking about adding more secondary guns to give it a bit more of a punch why not do that reduce tertiary armament and uh, increase secondary armament at the same time implement the new quality 10 inch guns update ship graphic Can we actually do that? When rebuilding your ships, you can install additional secondary guns of 6 inches caliber but only in single mounts. Okay. Now then, uh, forget about uh, the increase in secondary armament and stick with the. Uh, I think it was 12 guns, right? Or oh, 14, uh, 14 4 inch guns. Okay, this is nothing new. Okay. Monthly cost 1.1 million. It's quite a bit. How long would it take? 8 turns. But I think it's worth it. I certainly think it's worth it. Yeah, let's start rebuilding this ship. And if you are, we will be in, uh, in a good plus soon anyway because so many ships are now being finished. 
new docks completed, uh, light cruiser being commissioned, heavy cruiser being commissioned, another dreadnought being commissioned, so now we should have quite a bit of money. on. You are due to hold a speech at the annual gathering of the Navy League. What will be the gist of your speech? The seas should be kept peaceful for the prosperity of all nations. Budget minus, prestige minus, tension minus, no, certainly not. Tension plus, budget plus, prestige plus, tension plus plus. Um, let's go for Italy. That's not too bad of an tension increasement. Okay. Oh, they again reduce naval spending. I hope not too bad. Okay, just I think 300,000, a thousand uh, rice mark have been taken away from us per month. That is all right. But in that case, uh, it looks like we should lay down the next heavy cruiser generation. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's do that. I think we'll design the ship and lay them uh, down and then I'm going to call it a day for this episode. Okay, design ship, clear all, CA, rounds per gun, we can already set that a bit up, 140 rounds, let's make it 150, let's actually go for the 10 inch guns, and let's go for how heavy can they get? Maybe 14,000 tons for this time. How about that? Sounds all right to me. We can tweak that a bit, as you know, anyway. Let's go for 22 knots or 23. I think most other heavy cruisers are 23 knots fast. Uh, well, the armor is always, is always troubling me. Central range finder. Let's take two FC positions. Um, let's go for maybe seven inch. So the the oldest dreadnoughts of other nations uh, have also seven inch armor. Let's try that for now. I'm really just messing with the numbers here. To those of you who've seen the last episode, these numbers, these armor numbers, are just Wow, that's just really difficult for me to uh, get a comprehensive understanding of. Well, that's a heavy conning tower, wait a sec. How much weight is it actually? 1,700 tons. Let's go for 5 inch, I guess. Oh, this deck extended. I was, yeah, I slipped down by a column. No, that's much more reasonable. Deck extended, uh, let's go for 1.5 inch, and I thought this is belt, uh, the deck. Yeah, I just slipped down a whole step. Let's go for maybe 4 inch. Turrets, the turrets will be quite big. Yeah, let's add them so I can see the weight of the uh, turret armor. Let's just do it this in the same arrangement as our... Uh, dreadnoughts, I think, and double turrets. So we have a, something like 800 or 900 tons left. Secondaries, let's put two inch on them. Yeah, we can now build uh, the heavy secondary batteries, right? But I don't know if I want them on my heavy cruiser. I'm not sure, maybe... Maybe we stick with the six inch guns? What was it again about the casemates and the secondary armament? I think I want them to be in casemates, but I'm not quite sure if this is legal. Let's try that out. Oh, that's already way too heavy. Yeah, six sounds about right. Okay, so all that's missing is a class name for now. 
So let's adjust a few things. 150 rounds per gun sounds good. FC positions too sounds good too. 10 inch guns, great quality, superb. Uh, a displacement of 14,000 tons. So that's basically our Dreadnought design now as heavy cruiser. That is also faster, equally armed. Yeah, so I think our new heavy cruisers will actually be the better Dreadnoughts. Uh, the accommodation, we don't need a cramped accommodation at the moment. Engine priority can be normal too. Range medium is fine too. I'm thinking this actually looks quite solid to me now. I would like to compare it actually for a second with other uh, ships. Let's go to Great Britain. 6 inch, 9 inch guns, 4 pieces and quite a few 6 inch guns and basically more solid uh, secondary and tertiary armament. But that's alright. And it's a knot faster I think, isn't it? Or do we go for the 23 knots? We actually did go for the 23 knots. So that looks quite good to me. An inch more of armor, right? And they have no deck armor as it seems. Let's go and see what well they're already building new uh heavy arm uh, heavy cruisers too. But that's just twelve thousand tons. Let's go for let's say an American heavy cruiser. What's our most likely enemy at, at the moment? Italy, I guess. So let's have a look at the Italian heavy cruisers. They are building one, only have two in active service, eight thousand tons. That's nothing. Well they have ten inch guns too, but just two. Probably not the same quality that we have. Five inch belt armor. No, I think I think that that looks like a really solid, uh, solid design. But it's probably very expensive, and that's going to be the big problem because it weights just as much as. Uh, oh, what happened here? As. Uh, our dreadnought. Class name. Um, another German city, maybe. Let's go for Leipzig. Yep. No torpedo tubes, let's see. And all okay. Wow. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's add some superstructure. Something that looks really evil so everyone knows what they are getting into. Uh, No, that doesn't look evil at all. It looks better. Zigzag lines always make ships look more evil. Yep, looks alright too. Mm. How about something like a like a tower back here, and something to put our oops, something to put our funnels on. So yeah, the problem is uh, when I'm designing ships, I always compare the values, but at the beginning of the game you can compare them and if you don't have a proper understanding of this error and the, the ship's well attributes and what is too much, what is not enough, uh, then it can be quite difficult. But I'm, I think I'm quite happy with uh, this design. How expensive is it by the way? Can I see that already? High expense cost, but that's just... Uh, the hull and fittings, machinery cost. Oh, this is this column is uh, the cost in total. So it's probably not going to cost me forty nine thousand, right? I'm not quite sure about that, and it's definitely not going to cost me forty nine thousand a month. Okay, let's just uh, go to the building screen and see monthly build cost two point one million, and we will have development costs also at the beginning. I think I will lay down one for now just to get rid of the development costs 
and wait a bit until uh, the Hamburg is retrofitted to lay down the next one, I think. It sounds alright, how much is it going to be for 3.5 million, okay. Let's pay it. 1 million left. Maybe we can build some other stuff with these 1, one million that we have uh, left. How, mu how much again was a retrofit? Tension levels are okay. Open design for rebuild. Nope. I would just wanted to go into the rebuild screen. 1.1 million. That's okay. We can afford it. Let's send the vert into retrofitting too. 